Welcome to worship in our virtual Highland Park Christian Church Sanctuary. We're glad that you have decided to include us in your spiritual journey by sharing this time with us. Even though we can't be in the same room, we are united by one spirit. And as we talk today about hope and faith, remembering that, remembering that it is one spirit that unites us, can be our source of hope and can strengthen our faith. And so I invite you to step with me from the ordinary into the extraordinary as we worship God together. God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. Even if now, for a little while, we have to endure challenges, God remains with us right here, right now, to give us strength and hope. We rejoice in the gather to worship with God and to offer our thanks to God's faithfulness. Let us be united across time and space and be filled with praise and joy as we proclaim our faith in Jesus and worship God together. Let us pray. Holy One, as we gather, we rejoice for times of blessing and we pray for mercy in times of trial. Move among us as we come to rejoice and pray and worship you. Calm our ears and our minds so that with open hearts, we might be focused on you during this sacred time and throughout our lives. Amen. So our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament, from 1 Peter. And 1 Peter is a letter that was written and circulated among the Christian communities in uh, Asia Minor. So this would have been kind of a, like a chain letter. It, would, it wasn't just meant for one person, but it would make its way around. And it was meant to be a source of encouragement and guidance for these new faith communities so I invite you to listen as I read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
So I like movies. I love all different kinds of movies except for horror movies. You will not catch me watching a horror movie ever. But one of my favorite kind of movies is romantic comedies or those rom-coms because they just kind of let you be out of yourself for a little while and laugh and see what other crazy things people get themselves into. One of my favorite romantic comedies is When Harry Met Sally. I like it because it's an interesting plot and you have interesting characters and I love the music of Harry Connick Jr. So even though it's an older movie, it's still one of my favorites. So if you remember this movie, I know some of you probably weren't even alive when it was originally made, but if you remember this movie at the beginning, Harry and Sally, they're in a car and they're driving from Chicago to New York to start their new lives. And as they're in the car, Harry tells Sally that he always reads the last page of the book first. So that if he dies before the end, he'll know the outcome. Now in the case of this scripture, the beginning and the end are the same. In both cases, the beginning and the end of this passage, God is being praised. God is praised in the beginning as the source of new birth into a living hope. And at the end, our faith that is described as indescribable and glorious joy. So but what is faith? What is faith, this word? Well, faith can be defined as knowledge and deep trust in God's compassion, in God's great love. Now, during times of uncertainty, faith can be our greatest blessing. It is the one certainty. Our faith gives us certainty in the present and in the future, and even to the end, to that very last page. But in the middle, in the middle of the movie, when Harry met Sally, in the middle of our lives, in the middle of this scripture, there are various trials. So when the author of 1 Peter was writing this letter, the Christians that received it, in Asia Minor, they were experiencing trials. They were being persecuted. Folks who were new to Christianity, the Romans who had moved from their pagan religion, religions to the Christian religions, they were being ostracized by their community. They were being cut off, even from their own families. So first Peter, he emphasized that followers of Christ should imitate Christ, should imitate Jesus, and among other things, they should do good. And so that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Even though they're persecuted, even though they've been ostracized, even though they don't have all of the things that they used to have in that community, they are sharing the good news. They're spreading this faith that is more precious than gold. It was exciting news. It was new news. It was good news. But now that good news isn't really news or new information at all, given how often many of us have heard the story of Jesus. Perhaps the praise that we might offer might seem a little stale because we've heard the story so many times. So how do we refine our faith? How do we define our faith? How do we keep our faith from becoming stale? Well, the writer uses this analogy of a metalsmith who heats the gold in order to remove its impurities. It is tested by fire. Now, some, some people, we seek these refining or these defining experiences I mean, that's how Harry met Sally. They've both decided they're going to head to New York City to begin anew. Sally was going to start her new life there. She was going to become a journalist. She was choosing a path that she believed would define her, would refine her into the person that she was meant to be. So my question for you, wherever you are right now, is to think about, what refining 
and defining choices have made you. Maybe it was school. Maybe you decided where you were going to go to college or trade school or not continue your education after high school. Maybe it was that first job that you decided to try for. Maybe it was where you would live. Would you stay at home in the place that you had grown? Or would you go off to seek your fortunes? And then when you got there, would you live in an apartment? Or would you try and find a house? Who was your life partner going to be? What person did you want to spend the rest of your life with? Would you have children? Or would you choose not to have children? What other things? What other things have refined and defined who you are? Well, the truth is, we don't, we don't always get to choose what refines us, what defines us. Maybe you didn't get accepted to the college that you wanted to go to. Maybe the trade program wasn't accepting apprentices. Maybe your dream job, maybe it went to somebody else. Maybe that home that you finally decided upon was damaged by a weather event, some other kind of disaster. Maybe you've lost that person that you thought was going to be your life partner. Maybe you were unable to have the children that you so desperately wanted. Or maybe you find yourself living during an unprecedented time and you're suffering anxiety or isolation or fear or loss. Well, that's, that's where the first, the first century church found itself. They were suffering anxiety. They were living in isolation. They were fearful of persecution and grieving the loss of the teacher, the person that had changed them. Well, this writer, this person that wrote First Peter, he was telling those churches way back then, he was saying, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, even in the midst of that, the scripture, it started and it ended with praise. And they had hope. It might be safer sometimes to reflect on the experience of others, like Harry and, and Sally and other movie characters. It might be easier sometimes to interpret biblical praise in its context like the early church and say, well, that was okay for them. It might even feel somewhat satisfying to look into our own past, like that time before a tiny little virus took over our lives. You know, those movies, they conveniently fit all of life's challenges into two hours. Problem. Resolution, happy ending. In the early church, certainly they didn't have all of the complications that our modern lives have. Life was just easier for them. Of course they were able to praise. And the regrets and the shortcomings of our own past are somehow forgotten, are, are diminished, or dismissed. And we often offer our own praise for the parts where we found joy. But this author that wrote first Peter he got that first church he knew what they were going through he knows what we are going through and is reminding them and us that we have a living hope because of our faith in Jesus even if the there's these fires in our lives these refining and defining moments that we don't get to choose and they're thrust upon us, even when that happens, we have a source of indescribable and glorious joy. And this scripture, it tells us to sing about it. And some of us, including myself, you get that joy inside of you and you can't help it. You've got to sing a song, even if it's off key and off beat. It just, it's got to come out. Because genuine faith, it generates genuine praise. And to keep our faith genuine, we must keep it from going stale and choose positive ways to refine it. 
Our faith, it's refined and defined by prayer and meditation and by reading and studying scripture, among other things. For example, our faith is refined by days like these that we're in right now. There may be suffering along our journey. There certainly will be. But that suffering does not have to be the last word. Like Harry in the movie, we have read the whole story. We've read to the last page of the book. And we know how it ends. The middle of our stories may have some trials. But oh, what an amazing last page we have to look forward to. Our faith assures us that whenever we face these challenges, these refining and defining times and moments, that God is with us. Let us read again the beginning of our scripture passage. It said, Blessed be the God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So let us refine our faith so it never grows dull. Let us find our own ways of singing our praise even in the midst of these trials. And let us rejoice in God's mercy and the promise that whatever we face, we have a living hope in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this sacred time of gathering. Even though we cannot gather in one place, we gather in this virtual space, in this virtual sanctuary. And we have faith and we have hope. We thank you for that, God. There are people in this world and our own faith family who are facing trials, who are undergoing health concerns, who have worries about finances, who are facing the final days of loved ones. God, we pray that they will feel your presence with them during this time, that they will know that the final page of this story is a happy ending. That even though we face these trials, we have hope. God, we pray that you will be with the medical professionals, with all of those medical staff that are in the hospitals, from the people that clean to the people who are minding the front desk, to the nurses and the doctors, to these amazing teams of people who are caring and doing everything they can to help people recover from this devastating illness. We pray for wisdom, God, for our leaders, that in this time of uncertainty that they will place people over prestige, that they will choose health over money, that we will recover from this in body and spirit, first and foremost. God, you are an awesome God. And your love is greater than anything that we can imagine. We pray that we will continue to trust in you, to find our hope in Jesus. And that together, we will come through this stronger in faith, stronger as a community, and stronger as your people. God, now, together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who is in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Faith is both our gift and our responsibility. Faith is a divine gift because we cannot earn or buy or borrow it. Freely we have received, freely do we share the gifts of the Spirit. Faith is a responsibility because it has divine power to stir the church and community to action. Faith is dynamic. Faith is played out in the sharing and offering of our time, talent, and treasure. Faith lives in our church and homes and goes forth as far as our gifts and responsibilities can reach. Let us offer ourselves, our gifts, our talents, and our treasure today and every day in appreciation for the blessings that fill our lives. Let us pray. Generous and gracious God, we thank you for the bounty of your world and extravagance of your faith. With this faith, we commit to live with gratitude and generosity. Help us be willing to give of ourselves, even to the point that we are no longer comfortable, so that your love may be spread and our faith strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The table of the Lord is a place of community where all are welcome, and it is a safe place in the midst of life's chaos. It is at the table that we are renewed. This table can have special meaning if you are facing personal challenges. Jesus came to the table with challenges and shared a meal with those who would betray him. We too, in all our suffering, are asked to come and stay at the table even with the ones who have hurt us. Why? Because of all the things that the table represents. Most important, it represents hope for the future. No, suffering does not end at the table, but by coming to the table, we are reminded that God suffers with us, and through Jesus, we are assured that our suffering will not last forever. Let us come to the table of the Lord. We come to the table today It is our source of hope. In the midst of a world of uncertainty, we come here for the things that are certain in life. To be reminded of a place where we can come with our troubles and our worries and where we can encounter Jesus. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he told them to take and to eat to eat this bread as a reminder of his humanity, of his body. Then Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to them, and he said, drink from it, all of you. This cup represents a promise. I promise that I will not drink it again until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of heaven. This is the bread of life, and this is the cup of hope. We are invited and welcomed at this table. Let us pray. Holy One, this bread and cup are a feast, and they can fill us up. They can fill us up with hope and assurance. We come to the table with our hurts and our regrets and pray for a fresh start. We offer our thanks for your forgiveness and pray for the strength to offer others the same. Let us find hope in this communion, and then bear hope into your world. Amen. Amen. So now I invite you to take...
the bread to eat and to remember. And now I invite you to take the cup to drink and to remember. Thanks be to God. you for joining us for worship, for letting us be in your homes, to participate even though we cannot be together in one place in a worship service that unites us across time and space. Today we've thought about and talked about faith and hope and we need hope anytime but now more than ever it is important for us to remember that we have hope in Jesus Christ no matter what we face. And so now I invite you to receive the benediction. Holy God, we have gathered in this virtual space to worship you. And now we turn off our TVs and computers and go back to the ordinary. We pray that you will guide us and that you will remind us of the hope that we have in you now and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Blessings.